The primary feature of CliffX is to provide you with access to its actions. CliffX includes a variety of actions for controlling all different aspects of Live, and you access those actions via X triggers. Any clip in session view can be turned into an X clip by adding an identifier at the beginning of the clip's name. An identifier is any word or phrase enclosed in square brackets. All right, so if the clip already has a name, you could just add brackets around it to form the identifier. After the identifier, you'll list the action you want to perform. In this case, I want to toggle the mute status of the track, so I'll put mute. All right, now one of the benefits of X clips is that, just like any other clip, they could be quantized. To give you an example of that, I'll set global quantization to one bar, and now the action will be quantized. If you want to perform multiple actions, after the first action, put a semicolon, and then list the second action. In this case, I'll set global quantization to none. Now both actions will be triggered. So that's the default type of XClip. It'll perform all of its actions all at the same time. There's a couple of other types of XClips you can use as well. The first is the play sequence, or PSEQ. This one will sequentially step to the action list and perform the actions one at a time each time the clip is played. So in this case, the first time I play it, it's going to randomize track panning. Second time, it's going to reset track panning. Third time, it'll go back to randomizing again. All right, the next type is the loop sequence, or LSEQ. This is similar to the play sequence, except that it'll step to the action list each time the X clip loops. So in this case, it's going to step through the three crossfade assignments for the track, A, B, and off. Now with the play sequence and the loop sequence, there might be situations where you want to have one of the steps in the sequence trigger an empty action. All right, so for that, you can use the word dummy. So in this example I've got here, the first time I play this clip, it's going to trigger the dummy action, which does nothing. And then when the clip is about to loop again, it's going to trigger the second action, which is going to launch scene one. Any locator in arrangement view can be turned into an XQ by adding an identifier at the beginning of the locator's name, just like with XClips. And I've got a couple examples here. The first one is going to turn the metronome on. The second one is going to turn the metronome off and turn overdub on. In both cases, the action list is going to be triggered when the playhead crosses over the XQ. X controls require a bit more setup. The first step is defining the controls in your user settings file. As you can see, this file includes instructions and examples on how to set things up. So that I can show you how things work though, I've made a simple example here for my LPD-8. The next step is selecting the controller as the input for CliffX. As you can see, you can only select one controller as the input. If you'd like to use multiple controllers, you could download CliffX XT. All right, so back to the LPD-8. The first two pads will navigate left and right between devices. The third pad will select the first device on the master track. The next one will select the first device on the first track. The next four will apply to whichever device is selected. The first one will toggle the device on or off. The next one is an example of a momentary switch. X controls can each have an on action. That'll be performed when the control sends an on message and they can optionally have an off action. That'll be performed when the control sends an off message. So here's an example of that. In this case, uh, the on message will trigger device on, and the off message will trigger device off. So it's basically a momentary on-off switch. The next one will randomize the parameters of the device, and the last one will reset the parameters of the device. X control assignments can also be changed on the fly. For example, let's say I like the assignments I just created for the LPD-8, but in some cases I wanted to have different assignments. Let's say in this particular set, I wanted to have a pad that would momentarily mute all the tracks in the set. I can do that by using an XClip override. All right, this will change the assignment for just this set. All right, when I load a new set, it'll go back to the assignments that I made in my user settings. All right, so to do the override, you list the button name enclosed in two sets of square brackets. Then you list the on action, and if you want, you can also list an off action. In this case, the on action is going to be all mute, and then I can list that for the off action as well, or I can just put an asterisk. That means perform the same action for on and off.